Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to calculate this fraction here. We have 5 minus 5 to the power of negative 1 over 1 plus 5 to the power of negative 1. So this 5 to the power of negative 1 is here and here, and some of you might say, hey, this is a fraction, I can reduce fractions, so I just cancel this thing out, and then I have 5 over 1, which just equals 5, and I am done. The problem is that cancelling things out in a fraction is only allowed if you have a multiplication here and here as well. This is not the case in this problem here, so just cancelling out is not a good idea, so what else can we do to calculate this fraction? Maybe we start with this 5 to the power of negative 1, because the 5 minus is okay so far, but a negative exponent is usually nothing that we want to work with. So how can I write 5 to the power of negative 1 in a different way? Every time you have a negative exponent, so let's say something like x to the power of negative 3, you can always write this as a fraction. You always have a 1 in your numerator, and then you take this thing here again, so the x to the power of, but you don't write the minus here, you just take the 3. So every time you have a negative exponent, you can write it as a fraction, and then you don't have your negative exponent anymore. In our case, this means, okay, we have a negative exponent, we know we can write it as a fraction, it's always 1 over, and then you take your expression, 5 to the power of, you don't write the minus here anymore, just the 1 to the power of 1, we don't have to write that at all, so 5 to the power of negative 1 is the same as writing 1 over 5. So instead of this expression, we can write 1 over 5, and then in the de denominator, the same, we have 1 plus, and instead of this expression, we're going to write 1 over 5 as well. This is how our expression looks like now. And now we only have to calculate this. We have a number minus a fraction, and here a number plus a fraction. So let's start with our numerator, where we have 5 minus 1 over 5. How can we calculate this? We can write this number as a fraction as well. So we can write it as 5 over 1. And to be able to subtract two fractions, they have to have the same denominators, which is not yet the case here, but we can find a common denominator. If the numbers are so small, like they are here, you can always find a common denominator by just multiplying these two numbers. 1 times 5 gives us 5, and this is a common denominator. And now we have to see if we have to rename the fractions, because here we changed the denominator, we multiplied this denominator by 5, so we have to do the same with the numerator. We also have to multiply this number by 5 then. 5 times 5 equals 25. We don't have to change this fraction here, because we didn't change the denominator, uh, so we still have the 1 here in the numerator. Okay, now we are allowed to subtract because we have the same denominators. And the denominator stays, it is a 5, and we only subtract the numerators. 25 minus 1 equals 24. This is our result of this calculation here. So we have 24 over 5 in our numerator. And the same now with the denominator. What did we have there? We have 1 plus 1 over 5. The same rules for adding a number and a fraction. We write this as a fraction as well. We have 1 over 1 then. We find a common denominator in the same way we just did. 1 times 5 
gives us 5. We have to rename this fraction. We also have to multiply by 5. So 1 times 5 equals 5 here as well. We don't have to change the second one. And now we are allowed to add these two fractions. We have the 5 as a denominator and 5 plus 1 gives us 6. This is the result of this calculation. So we have 6 over 5. Okay, now we have a fraction divided by another fraction. How can we divide fractions? Well, we have 24 over 5 divided by 6 over 5. You divide by a fraction by multiplying by its reciprocal. So instead of dividing, we're going to multiply and then we have to change these two numbers. So we take the 6 and the 5, write the 5 here and the 6 down here. Now, if we want to multiply, before multiplying, let's check if we can cancel things out because we have the 5 down here, the 5 up here. Yes, that's great. It cancels out, uh, which gives us a 1 because 5 over 5 equals 1. And the 24 and the 6, they are both divisible by 6. 6 over 6 equals 1. 24 over 6 equals 4. So we only have 4 times 1 which equals 4, and here we have 1 times 1, which equals 1. 4 over 1 is just equal to 4, so in total we have a result of 4, and we solved our problem. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up, it helps me a lot. I wish you a wonderful day, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!